Welcome everybody. My name is John Stenhouse and I'm the Business Support Manager at the University of Essex, University Enterprise. So, thank you for joining us today. Our webinar today on investment readiness is brought to you in conjunction with the Knowledge Gateway Innovation Centre and Essex Business School and is co-funded by Essex County Council. We have a, a quite a long webinar today, which is going to be presented by Joshua. But in the meantime, I would like to introduce you to Neil Griffith from the Innovation Centre, who is here today to talk about the advantages of working from the University of Essex. Morning, everybody. Uh, happy Friday. Um, I think John mentioned investment readiness then, and actually this is profit first webinar. So you are in the right place if that is what you're uh, expecting. And I'm sure that's just put the fear of God up Josh here as well. He's just about to present. So yes, you are in the right place. So don't worry about that. Um, who am I? Uh, my name is Neil. I'm the Innovation Director here at the Innovation Centre in Colchester. We are on the Knowledge Gateway. So we are part of the University of Essex, right on the edge of the campus and part of the University Enterprise Zone, which John and Josh Clark are part of with the Angels at Essex crew. So they are based, they are based in the building. Um, we are run by Oxford Innovation. So we have 27 centres across the networks. We're a national network. And the way it works is we are basically a profit share with the university. That, that's kind of how it works. We have been open since 2019, but we are Colchester's best kept secret. And the goal of the building is to really kind of scale tech, digital and creative startups. So, so our value proposition is to really help these startups to grow their business, give them support, be sounding boards. But we feel we're more than that. Our added value is to kind of help the local ecosystem, connecting, enabling people and really driving things forward because that's what we're about. We, to give you some kind of highlights of, of 2021, because, you know, it has been, has been a disruptive year, we've actually had a really good pandemic. When we look back to July 2020, we were only 10% full with businesses. We are now at 62% as of today. So, you know, really proud of the team, really proud of what we've delivered here, and really proud of all the companies that have chosen to make this their home. We're sitting at around about 32 businesses, they're across multiple sectors, so they include software as a service, digital marketing, got designers, cryptocurrency, insurer techs, and media stuff going on, uh, companies working with airline companies and F1 software. So it's, a, it's a, a real mix of kind of people, businesses, which is, you know, great for us. During 2021, we delivered nearly 190 business support sessions across multiple disciplines. And we've had five businesses scale up during that time. So, you know, we're really helping to drive Essex forward from that point of view. For me, we're kind of a fundamental sounding board and pushing people together. So kind of two out of three of the businesses here will work together in some, in some way or another. And that's where the kind of innovation is in some of these centers. It's kind of helping to support that network. So, uh, the wooden dollars, if you like, are circling around the building and the ecosystem, which is, you know, I guess leads leads nicely onto the webinar today and, and kind of why I wanted to be part of it and why I wanted to push it forward. Um, my personal view is that most people and businesses can grow revenue. It usually involves, you know, increased costs and it usually involves discounting of some kind and often giving away stuff for free. And that includes your time as well, I guess. And it's kind of why many businesses fail to grow and why mainly startups fail in those first five years. So I think the goal for today is if I, John, Josh, Joshua can help say just kind of one business or uh, if you're in a, a larger business, gain some form of nugget that can actually help you and save you and, and get you to the next level, then kind of we've, we've done our job, I feel. And, you know, this time of year is, is perfect for that increased focus on profitability of the business. So, yeah, that's a bit about us, me, what we do. But, yeah, feel free to kind of connect afterwards. And I will hand back to John Stenhouse. So I would now like to uh, 
invite our guest speaker today from the Essex Business School. It is Joshua Obey-Nayaka, and Joshua is an FCA accountant and also a lecturer at the Essex Business School on corporate law. And Joshua, um, you know, tell us a little bit about yourself before you start your presentation. Okay, John, thank you very much. And uh, happy Friday once again. I know that you wish um, two occasions, so let me make it three or four. Right, so I am a lecturer at the uh, business school, but my background is accountant. So um, I've been an accountant uh, going past I mean, nearly uh, two decades now, um, but I've come into academia and um, I'm teaching accounting and finance. But that said, I'm also um, somebody who has run its own set up and run its own business. And so I understand business um, from a practical point of view, and I also do understand business from an academic point of view. So it is that to which I think um, it is, is, is driving me to wanting to be part of this um, uh, excellent project of the Innovation Center. So I'm here to, to um, uh, present to you um, this profit first, um, what it means. It's, it's an excellent concept and um, I hope um, we enjoy it. So yes, Profit First, this is a special presentation. It is, I think the first time probably most of you are hearing of it. It's um, very simple, but very, very effective. So, okay, so today's seminar, we have these uh, seven objectives and the objectives are the, just to know the nature of business expenses, which I'm sure you, you all have one. Um, gap principles, I'll explain the gap, okay? I'll explain what it is, the types of profit, realizing profit, um, then profit first principles. You will have examples of some practical exa uh, um, um, examples of profit first, and then we'll have the final word. Okay, so the nature of business expenses, and I put these slides there, not because I want to explain them one by one, but because you all run businesses and you know, if there's anything which occupies a business person's mind is expenses, it's expenses. That, that is so we, we, we are in business to, uh, seems like, to, seems to do. So we have various types of expenses depending on the type of business you are running. So if you look at this list, I'm sure you can see some which or uh, uh, relate to you or and others which don't, but that is the purpose. The reason is that I, I want this to capture as many uh, businesses as possible. So you, these things occupy everybody's mind. Every business mind uh, person thinks of all the fees and advertising and all the, all the um, uh, budget and charges and heat and lighting and so many of these occupies us. And so it is as if we are in the business to, 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 um, uh, uh, to just clear expenses. And so I'm not saying expenses are bad, but I'm saying it is something which focuses on everybody every businessman's mind. And so have a look at this and see, where do you think I am? How many, maybe you pay all of these or you don't pay all of these, but this is uh, just uh, for you to say, John. Okay, so now let's come to this famous uh, acronym or, or, or phrase called GAP. See, GAP is generally accepted accounting principle. So this is what everybody accept. This is the convention, is a tradition, is what accountants do. We, we, we have a principles which we follow. And for the income statement, we say sales minus expenses is, gives you what? Profit. So that is, this is what we all know as at the time I'm speaking, and I'm talking um, in my capacity as, as somebody who is a professional accountant. This is our bread and butter. Sales minus expenses is which gives you profit. Sales, so when you are selling, the, 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 the next, the first thing which comes to mind is expenses. 
And this is what we have accepted. It's because we know that when you have your sales, take off your expenses, then you have your peace of mind, okay? So it is clearing our, our, our head of all the expenses. Then we know that something is left, which we call profit. This has been how we've, we've been running business um, over many years now. Okay, so this is the gap principle. So if we come to the balance sheet, we'll have, we, we, we will have our own equation, but for purposes of this seminar, and it's just uh, uh, an hour or so and, and, and over, I want us to focus on the income um, statements. Sales minus expenses gives you profit. So your sales is what you sell. It can also be called a turnover. It can also be called the revenue. It doesn't matter what you call it, whatever you sell is sales. Even if you are not in the business of selling things, if it's a service industry, you can call it turnover, you can call it uh, uh, um, um, whatever you call it, but it is sales. But once you do that, you know that you get your sales figure, in your mind, expenses, okay? And this is standard. Every accountant will tell you that, okay, before you think of profit. So what you call profit is very subjective. What is profit? What then is profit? What is profit? But there are many types of profit. So we would go through this. By the end of today, you'll be able to see the types of profit we have and um, how useful this uh, classification is to us as business people. Right, so let's look at what I call the old school. The gap is what we call the old school. This is what we all know. This is the, is the, is the, is the way we do things. So a simple profit statement, you have your turnover, which is your sales, or which is your revenue. You take away your cost of sales. Okay, so maybe you, if you are running your business, you are not involved in the, in the in putting together the cost of sales. But the cost of sales will be done maybe by the accountants but, or somebody else. It is that all the incidental costs which you have incurred as a result of um, achieve, arriving at the sales. So here you would include things like your purchases, okay, your raw materials or things you have bought and sold and all the uh, uh, incidental costs to, to, uh, to which then gave you the, the, uh, the, the um, inventory to sell. So that all those will come under your cost of sales. And then if you take that off, we have something we call the gross profit. And you bear with me because you, uh, if you're asking, okay, why are we doing this? We're doing this because we are going, we are going somewhere that will let you um, contrast this with where we're going. So then you have your gross profit. Now gross profit is called gross profit because it has many other things, considerations, which has to be um, um, uh, taken away, okay? Um, this is profit before the operating expenses and any other expenses. Okay, so it is profit, but it is not for you. It is profit, but it is waiting for certain things to be taken away. So we have the operating expenses. So your operating expenses here, I'll give you two examples. You have distribution expenses, you have admin expenses. So within the admin expenses, you can have your, uh, um, your, your, your uh, business premises and, 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 and all the other things which comes in, yeah? Um, uh, you know, depreciation, so many things come in there. So almost all your business expenses, almost all your business expenses, apart from that which occurs, um, which, which is associated with the purchase of your raw materials, comes under operating expenses your wages and salaries for your staff, employees, they all come there, okay? So it's a huge place, it's a big place where all, almost, almost the last pot for all your, your, your legitimate business expenses. And I know that most of you uh, know this already or your accountant will tell you some of your expenses or, or your expenses are tax allowable and so these, 
this can be, uh, some can be claimed, um, and the rest of it. Okay, so when you take all that away, then you have your profit before interest and tax. This is what we call the operating profit. Okay, so here you are thinking of interest. So if you are now thinking of the bank, okay, think of the bank. The monies, the, the loans you've taken from the bank to run your business. And every business needs a, 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 a loan of some sort. Okay, you need a, you, you, the loan you take in, the interest payable that um, the tax man allows you or the GAP system allows you to um, declare that um, uh, after the operating profit or profit before interest and taxes. And you consider that you take that away. And then you have what we call the profit before taxes. Then you think of the tax man. Okay, so let me take the tax man bit from it. So current small businesses is 19%. So you, you, you take 19% uh, of whatever remains profit before taxes, and then you have profit after tax, which is your net profit. So let's focus on this. So the question I'm asking here is that, you see, this seems brilliant. It's a very, very workable, very useful, very practical, yeah, um, a kind of flow. And um, uh, as an accountant, I mean, I can't afford it, but see, we need to learn all the time. If you look at this, this uh, 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 format or template, where do you find yourself as, Entrepreneur, where are you? Where are you? Okay, you can ask yourself that question. Where am I here? So you are, you are running the business. You are taking all the risk. You, you are waking up midnight thinking and planning and you are doing all the, 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 the things to get the business going. But where are you in this profit statement? So in your profit statement, you are not there. Actually, you probably are there, but you are at the bottom end of it. You are at the bottom end of it. That is, for me, it's an eye opener, okay, to see, okay, so why is it that I'm doing the, I'm running the business, I'm taking the risk, you and your, 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 uh, uh, your investors taking the risk, and the first thing you think about is your, is your, Cost. And then the next one, you think about your expenses. And then the next step, you think about your interest. Then the next one, you think about your tax man. So you are thinking of all your expenses, all the employees, all the costs. And then you think of the, uh, the banks. And then you think of the tax man. And then you become the miserable person at the end. That is, if there is something to be taken. This is what we think something has to change. Not because we are saying, don't do any of that, but there has to be a better way of doing it. Right, so we have just a simple illustration, okay? So for all that I said in the slide before, let's say this is, this is you, your business, this is your business, and your sales turnover, you know, uh, revenue is 120,000, this is at the end of the year. And then your cost of sales is, 35,000, your gross profit is 85,000, your operating expenses, this is where you, you, all the other things that I've said, your salaries, staff, you know, office administration and all the other incidental costs, running the business amount to 55,500. Now profit before interest is 29,500. Your next step is, I'm thinking of the bank. Of course, when you take loans, you must pay, okay? So uh, you must pay the loan interest, okay? Pay. The loan repayable itself doesn't come here. This is only the interest part. The repayable part, you know, uh, uh, um, uh, doesn't come here. It goes onto uh, a separate uh, account, which is the balance sheet. So then you have a profit before tax, which is, which is uh, 25,300. 
And then you think of the tax man, corporation tax, 19%, 4,807, and then profit after tax, which is 2493, okay, which is the net profit. So you can see here, you, the entrepreneur, so far have not even taken a penny. You haven't taken a penny. So my question is, where are you here? Why are you doing the business? I'm not saying this format is wrong, but I'm saying this is, it's a kind of challenging the paradigm, challenging the paradigm, asking ourselves, the fact that we do things the same all the time does not mean it is right, or does not make it right. That's all, does not make it perfect. So it is just reflective to see if there is a better way of doing this. So this is it, 20,493. So this is out of this, then you think, okay, maybe let me take something out for myself and pay myself. You, the entrepreneur, are not there. And I say this because you see, the SMEs are very, the small and medium sized um, companies are very important, yeah, to, to, to UK's economy. Okay, so it is important that these businesses, your business is allowed to survive. See, there are 5.58 million small and medium-sized businesses, uh, uh, private businesses in the UK. And out of that, 99.9%, okay, 99.9% are, are SMEs or companies like yours with less than 250 employees. You see, so the economy depends on you, which means that you as a, as a business person must survive. And so all the ways, the support, the help must be given to you to survive because we depend on you, okay? You, you, we, the economy depends on you so much. So you are important in this, in this direction. So we have gone through the old school and I've asked many questions, not least uh, um, one of which, which, which I ask, where, where, where are you in this profit statement? Where did you find yourself? So looking at what we have just done, or the, the, the profit statement we've just, we've, uh, we've just seen in the previous slide. Okay, if you did something like that by yourself, I'm asking you, did you manage to make a profit? If you put your, your realistic figures, your own company figures in it, yeah, if you're able to do that, then uh, um, you can know whether you would have made profit or loss or uh, good profit or bad profit. And what you call profit, what you call profit, is it something which is profiting you or profiting the paper or profiting the, the account or profiting who? Now, how much salary have you taken? Okay, how much salary have you taken? How much have you taken in the course of the year? We only saw profit after tax um, uh, at the end of it. And so I'm asking you, within that framework, we did not disclose, show any salary you've awarded yourself as a business owner. So for whose sake are you running the business? You're running the business I mean, with you, uh, uh, with your interest not in it, but your focus is to get the business uh, to survive, but you don't take any salary or you take salary, but after everything has been taken away. If you took a salary from our framework, where would you charge it to? So if we look at the, the GAP system, and I want you to look at it, maybe you can ask your accountants or whoever does your, 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 your accounts for you. Who is the chief beneficiary of the business? Who, who benefits from this, from your business? And then if you can answer that, or if you can't answer that, my question to you is, why are you in a business? See, the answer to that, without me even uh, prompting anybody to say anything, would be we are in a business to run expenses. 
We are business, we are in it, we get money, we get, we, we make sales. As soon as we make sales, the first thing that comes to mind is your expenses. Deal with the expenses, deal with the expenses, deal with the cost, deal with the expenses, deal with the cost. And you, as, an, as the owner, as the entrepreneur, as the key person to the business, your survival is relegated to the margins as if you don't matter. But you matter, you as a business person matter. Without you, the business won't be there. So we are moving to the next slide to see something simple. Right, so the summary of what we have here is that, okay, uh, um, uh, you, your focus in business is how to meet business expenses. That is something which I keep saying. So you will get used to this kind of phrase. And I, I'm saying that deliberately because I want you to, I want you to engage in your, you, you to engage with it. You ask yourself these questions, even after the seminar you go home, you ask yourself, why am I in business? I'm not, I'm, because you have to challenge yourself that you are not just here to meet business expenses, okay? There's no joy in doing that. But we have to do it, but we have to find another way of doing it. You will do everything. You move heaven and earth to meet all your expenses. That, that is, it's, it's natural. It comes with, 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 I mean, with our nature. We just want to clear that and then we can have peace of mind. We can have a dry morsel of bread after paying every, every, every expense. Then we think that's fine. No, that is not fine. So, which means that you make all monies available to pay expenses. And then you practically pay everything with that first and you do not consider rewarding yourself as entrepreneur. This is dangerous. And I know that there are statistics which show how many businesses could fail, many small scale businesses which fail. I'm not going to bore you with our statistics. But suffice you to know that many small businesses start and within the first two, three years, they are gone out of business because of the way these things which we are talking about are managed. You see, because you are not taking any money, because you are not, you, you are not taking any salaries or rewarding yourself uh, uh, um, uh, as part of the profit statement, you end up taking large sums of money in one go. You see, not because you're angry, but because you think, okay, I need, I need 10,000 pounds, let me take 10,000 pounds. And that can also put the business at risk, expose you to, 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 to financial risk. That is not also very good. And so the middle ground is where we are moving now, okay? So right now, let's agree that we have been in business to meet our expenses. Now, something new. Something, something new. It's a breath of fresh air, okay? Breath of fresh air. It is called profit first. Okay, maybe some of you uh, must have heard of it. And um, uh, even so, then it's better because you, you understand the principles. So what is profit first? What is profit first? Profit, the focus of profit first, is to put you, the entrepreneur, the business person, your investors first. Anything you do, you put yourself first. I know somebody will be saying, how can you, how can you say that? How can you say that? How do we run the business if we put ourselves first? But wait, yes, John. Okay, so, this is based on a fantastic book which was published in uh, 2014 by Mike Mikhailovich. Um, it's, it's an extraordinary book. I know sometimes we read books and we're thinking, okay, you know, what's in it? But this is, this is very good. So I want to take you through the philosophy um, quickly and then we go to um, uh, uh, the next stage. Okay, so what is this one about? The, the, the purpose of, of, of the profit first, as I said, is to put the entrepreneur at the, at the, at the, at the forefront of 
the, um, of, of the business. So that means that you come before the expenses. And I know this doesn't make sense because it is a go going against the gap wisdom. The gap wisdom says profit, you know, sales, less expenses, we have profit. Now this is changing that equation. This is saying you, after every sales, you come first. You come first and then everything else will follow. But there are principles to it, okay? And, and there is a philosophy behind it as well. So the next slide will, will help us to unpack that. Okay, so now you have it, owners first. Okay, so we are, we are, it's not like we are playing with, we are playing on words, okay? Re, uh, substituting, substituting profit with owners, no. This is just what it is, owners first. And the owners here, I'm talking about you, the entrepreneur, I'm talking about you, the, uh, you and your investors and all people who have invested in you. Some of you have, 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 have got other investors, you got shareholders in your business, family people investing in you. See, they, it is a collective. So when I say the, I use the, 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 the word owners, it means it's, it's a collective for all people that have got direct financial stake in your business, you and your investors, okay? Or those who have put up the uh, equity capital. You come first, okay? You first. Now, it is important that you come first because under the first profit, when you don't come first, then business suffer. If you come last, then, uh, uh, if you come last, then business suffer. If you come first and, and you, we will see why coming first um, helps you and helps the business. Yeah, helps you and helps the business. So re let this particular slide uh, um, uh, stay in your, in your mind. Um, owners first, yes, keep, hold on to this whilst we go to the next one. Okay, so now we have a new, a new uh, approach. You remember the gap approach was sales, less expenses equals profit. Now, the profit first is sales, less profit equal expenses. This is mind boggling because as an accountant, say I never thought I'll be saying this because you think, when, when do you ever think this will be? But here we have, we have it. So we are putting the focus on profit and not profit that you, 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 you're going to take to make sure the business can run. You're not going to take any profit to imperil the business. You're not going to put the profits, to, your, your profit to take business, uh, to, to, to put the business at risk. No, but it is, it is a way of running business, which we are, in, we, we are, we are uh, uh, recommending uh, with the way you do business, changing the way you do business, which, which is healthy for you and healthy for the business. Remember I said, you see, the vast uh, 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 um, uh, 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 percentage of, 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 of companies in the UK are small and medium-sized entities. And so, you know, your survival is key to, to, to this economy and it's key to, to employment, it's key to, to tax, it's key to revenue, it's key to, it's key to everything. And so it is a way we, we have to find better ways to make sure that you stay in business as happy and healthy and, and, and uh, uh, without any serious going concerns, okay? So the focus now is you, profit. Okay, so you, you will remember that equation. Sales less profit equals to expenses. Now, let's stay within this, uh, with the, on, on this slide and look at the, some of the philosophical underpinnings of it. And I've got something here, okay? This is something we call the Parkinson's law. Okay, so a Parkinson's law, 
it, it, it came out um, uh, in the in the fifties. Okay, by a person called um, uh, I think Nicholas Parkinson, and he came out with this satirical line in a in a in an uh, article which he wrote to the Economist, and the first line of that article says that work expands so as to fill the time available to it. See, work expands so as to fill the time available to do it. And you think, okay, how does that apply here? How does work link to my business? Okay, what this one means is that from our business point of view, the demand we make upon a resource tend to expand to match the supply of that resource. Okay, so, so if, we, if, we, if we are given um, one year to do something, if you're given one year to do a task, you will use one year to do that task. And if you're given three months to do the same task, you will probably use the same, you use three months to do the same work. And better still, the same task, if you are even given one month to do it, you will find a way to do it within a month. This is the Parkinson's law. You see, that is, that is the law. So if we, if we think that we need all the monies to run the business, then it means we will need all the monies to run the business. If we think that we have to freeze all our all our um, uh, uh, freeze all our the, the rewards we will give to ourselves as employ as as owners of the business so that we can make the business that uh, we can make enough available for the business to run that is how the business will run the business will the, the, the demand for that money will expand so work expands to fill the time available to it. And, and, and the, the analogy which is given is expanding motorways. See, so when you when when there is traffic congestion um, in, 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 in the city or in the motorway uh, on, on the roads, then there is a clamor for motorways to be expanded, yeah, from three lane to four lane to five lane. Knowing that or hoping, that's the hope, I like that. I like the word hope. Hoping that when we expand the motorways to five, six lanes, then everybody would drive freely and, you know, uh, easily. But as soon as the motorway is widened to five lane or six lane, then there are cars which come and fill it up. That's what it is. But you compress it to two lane and the motorway will still cope. So that this is an important philosophy, which I think we can borrow into the way we run our business. This is what belies the, the, the profit first. It is an important philosophy behind the, the, the profit first, okay? Um, you see, when you focus on yourself and you take the profit first, what happens is that you think that the business has a constraint. It has financial constraint because you've taken your bid first, okay? So the, now the business has less to work with. Which means you are, you, you are scared that the business probably will collapse. But constraints are the best thing you can work with. Yeah, constraints. So let us remember that if something must be done in a year, it will be done in a year. If it must be done in a month, it will be done in a month. So that the point I'm making is that the smaller, the bigger the, 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 the pot for uh, for, for all your expenses will mean that you will have expenses to eat that up. So if you substitute expenses with work, then you would say, yes, the adage goes that expenses will expand to fill the monies available to it. That is it. Now let's look at this. Now, all of you, I'm sure, um, can see, if you can see what we have here, very, very, very simple uh, uh, illustration pictures. This is, this is, well, it's not me, this is John, because 
You know, that's John's hand, okay. <laughs> Interesting. Yes. So you go to the to the bathroom, you have uh, uh, your toothpaste is, is, is finished, but you need to brush your teeth. And then you're thinking, I can't go to the shop. The shop hasn't opened. So what do I do? It's immediately what comes to your mind is that, OK, let me, let me, let me find a way. This is the first, the first picture is, the, is how innovative you can become. You pick the, the empty, empty uh, uh, tube and you look at it and you're thinking, okay, I need to find something from here. It looks like it's finished, it's empty, right? So you hold it against anything which is there and you try to squeeze it, you squeeze it. So you, you, you will squeeze it because you think you want to get the, a little drop, something to brush your teeth. You go to the shop to go and get some later on, but that morning, your creativity is set. And then if you think do that and you think you're not getting enough, what do you do? You think, okay, let me find a way. Okay, um, this is toothpaste. Okay, it must respond to heat. So let me get warm water. Okay, you put, you put that in the warm water. So maybe we are, we are learning something new uh, in terms of how, how we use our toothpaste. You never know, this probably might be an unintended, uh, unintended uh, uh, benefit of this seminar, anyway, just me. So you put it in a, in, a, in, a, in a warm water, it melts it, and then it pushes it right up onto the, to the, to the, um, uh, 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 to the end. Now you say, okay, I don't even want to squeeze it. I want to get everything from it because, so what do you do? You cut it open. So that morning, your disappointment of seeing your toothpaste empty or a tooth, a pay tube empty, you see, it's, 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 it's gone because you managed to clean your teeth before you, you went out. But look at the beauty. You see, immediately you were faced with constraints. Constraints of, of, of non-availability and, and, and time not permitting you to go and get something else. Your imagination set in. You see, your imagination set in. You're beginning to become creative, innovative. And this is you at the third stage. And then you have your your, 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 your tube cut open it into two and you are able to have something. So, so when it is cut into two, then you see, you, you have even more there which can last for, for the next day. But until you did that, you thought this toothpaste was, was finished. You thought there will be nothing left. And probably if you had, uh -huh, let me ask that question. If you, what would have happened if you had a new set of toothpaste, okay? If you had a, a new set of toothpaste in, in your cabinet somewhere, what do you think we'd have done? I know the answer because I've done it myself. You would have thrown this in the bin and then put the other one, unscrew it and use it. But look at what you are throwing away. Work will expand to meet the resources available to it. Costs will expand to meet resources available to it. The smaller the, cost, the, smaller the resources available to it, the, the, the cost will also squeeze to meet that, uh, um, that uh, uh, resources. Okay, so here we have it. The core principles. See, so the philosophy. Let the philosophy run through whatever we are saying because that that is uh, that is the background. Yeah, let it be the background, and 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 and, and, and let's reflect. Whilst we reflect on the core principles, small plates. We all go to restaurants, and there are there are two types of restaurants. Okay. 
There are some which you go and I think they say we call it eat as much as you can. Okay. So those restaurants, you just go and you pay money or whatever it is, and everything is there, and you can eat and eat and eat. Yeah, everything is there, just yeah, scoop as much as you can. But there are some which are much portion, you go there and you're served, you're served in small plates. But you know why some plates serves small plates and why some plates serves with bigger plates or eat as much as you can. And I'm sure you will experience at the restaurant will tell you that if you go to a very nice restaurant and you serve a small plate, you see, look at the time you spend there. You see, because you, you, you are eating in bits. And so you enjoy the food, okay? You enjoy the food. There is no choking. You know, you enjoy it, you know, um, slowly, slowly, and you are able to take in, you know, some good, uh, uh, good, good portions, but in smaller, in smaller bits, small plates. So with, with profit first, we say use small plates. And we'll go to the next slide, not now, but the small plate means that, you see, when you have your sales and you are do go in with the profit first approach, you start by, by uh, um, uh, allocating yourself some percentages. You take some percentage. Maybe you said, okay, um, I made a sale of 100,000, my salary, I'm taking that. Okay, so here we go. Right, so you have, you have uh, uh, um, this picture, this picture, okay, this picture. And I'm sure that will tell most, most stories. So when you have, you have um, uh, 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 eat as much as you can or big plate and small plate. Small plate means that you can stay there for a long time. Big plate means you would, you would leave quickly. Big plate also means that, you see, when you, because you don't take profit, you don't, you don't take, you don't pay yourself in the business um, in, in reasonable time, you end up taking big chunk like that in one go. Okay, take it like that in one go. And you take it spilling over. This is where you put your business at risk. Yeah, this is where you put your business at risk. So you can see that you're taking more than you should have taken because you think, well, I've done the business, how come I've not paid myself? And then boom, you take it. But if it is something you're taking over a small period of time, two things will happen. Number one, your business will not feel it. And you will, will also benefit because you would have an accumulation of profit of some sort over a period of time. Okay, so in the end, both will benefit. But if you take your profit like this one, like the picture on my right, okay, which probably will be on your left, but picture on my right, the big plate, what that means is that, you see, you're taking more than necessary because sometimes you're angry, you're upset because why am I in business? Why is it that I'm always thinking of expenses? So out of frustration, you just take large sums and that imperils the business. So use small plates, okay? We'll come to that plate, uh, that percentages, serve sequentially, okay? And then remove the, the um, remove the temptation, you see sequence, make it, make it, make it a nice routine for you. Remove the temptation. We are going to show you in this profit first that when you have taken that small plate, don't keep it near by the business, put it away. So we go through that, take it away, hide it. You see, take it away. So out of sight is out of reach. You see, let me give you one simple example. If you are hungry at home and you go to uh, your kitchen, you see the first thing you do, you open the cabinet or the cupboard. And then you see, ah, you've got all the crepes and chocolate and biscuits and things are there. 
You see, I mean, you, you're talking to them. But when you are hungry and you go to the kitchen and you don't, you open the cabinet or the cupboard and you don't find anything, you find a way to survive. You think, okay, let me cook something. But because these things were there, you will not cook. Number two, sometimes you go to the kitchen, you're, hung, you're not hungry, you're just there. And, and, and we go to the kitchen a lot. And these days, all of us are working from home. And the kitchen probably becomes the, the best place in the household. You go there, because every five minutes you go there, you, you open the fridge, as you do. I, I do a lot, open the fridge, check in there. It's not that there's something new in there. I go there, you open the fridge, I do that, you open the cup. If you open it and you, you find something there, you pick it up. But if there's nothing there, you are not hungry, you just, it's just habit. So remove something from your sight. Remove the temptation. Hide that money you've taken from the business as your profit, take it away from your sight. And then let the rhythm flow, okay? Let it be regular, let it be regular. So when it is regular, two things happen. Number one, you benefit because you would have money being kept aside for you gradually, 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 gradually. And then maybe at some point, okay, I need some. Then you go there. It doesn't affect the business. The business will also benefit because it's, it will get used to, it will get used to dealing with its own, managing its own affairs. That is the business. That's what I mean not you, managing it all affairs without the money to be taken away. This is a win-win for you and your business. Okay, so now maybe I just have to give you 30 seconds to have a breather, to think through what we have said because um, it's a lot in there. Now, there are practical activities which we, we are not going to um, do one for you or with you as I speak, but I've prepared some which I can, I can explain to you. So let's go through the, the practical activities. And this sometimes takes time. You know, discussing with, with uh, when we in our discussion with John, John says, the accountant won't be happy. Okay, so let, let's, let's, let's ignore their angst first and just let's pretend they will, they will, they will just listen to you. Okay, so. You set up four separate accounts. It's an administrative, not nightmare, but uh, 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 importance. Set up four separate accounts and call these accounts account one. So here you have income accounts. This is where all your sales go. So that is already there. You already have it. Then you have your profit account. Yeah, and then you have your owner's pay account. And then you have your tax account. Okay, so you have income account, profit account, owner's pay account, and tax account. So whatever remains is what in the income account is what you would use to run the business. So. Let's focus on these four accounts. So when you've done your sales of say 10,000, okay, sorry, let's, before we, we, we bring the figures. Then you have, they say, after this, set up a three new accounts, okay? Three new accounts. And these accounts, the, the principal says, make, make these savings. Savings because so that you don't go there. You don't go there often, you don't use it as a debit card to buy things here and there. The three accounts will be for your profit account, your owner's pay account, and your taxes account. You see, before I go to the next one, they, can you see something happening here? You see, we haven't gone to the next slide yet, but I want you to begin to see that at the, when the year is ending and the tax uh, administration is beginning, what you begin to think of first is, how am I going to pay my taxes? What money have I got left? 
You understand because you are running the business and using the money, you're running the business, you use the money, running the business, you use the money, running the business, using the money. And so the money hasn't gone anywhere, but it's gone in the business, and you're thinking, what am I going to use to pay my taxes? But with this approach, by the end of the year, you would have enough sitting there more than what you need to pay the tax. That's number one. You will have enough sitting there more than what you need to pay yourself as an owner. That will also be there. And your business will still be running. So the worries of tax payment is gone. Not that you are thinking of the tax man first, but yourself, your health, your mental health and emotional health and all the stress that comes with the end of year and where to find money to pay taxes, that will be gone. Remember small plates. Remember small plates. Remember small plates. Sequentially. Yeah? Regularly. Maintaining the rhythm. So you would be taking stress away from the business. Now, the third bit is determining the target allocation percentages. Now, this is called TAP. The target allocation percentage simply means that for these four accounts, you determine, or three accounts, determine what goes in there. So, for instance, because we are thinking of small plates, we will say that for um, uh, the percentage we want to allocate for our profit account, maybe it will be, say, 5%, 5%. So if you make a sale of 10,000, you put 5% away. And then, say, for the owner's account, owner's pay account, you said, well, I'm the boss. I'm running the business on behalf of my, uh, uh, of my uh, investors. So I'll put 20%. So you put 20%. So you put 5 and 20%, so it's 25%. And then the tax account, tax account is, you know, 19%, 20%, put 20%, so you have got 45% of your 10,000 sales put aside. The business has 55% of the sales remaining. Remember the philosophy, yeah? Work will always expand to meet resources available to it, okay? <laughs> Remember that. So you have left 55% of your sales available to run all your businesses, the expenses and everything which goes in it. And going by the Parkinson's law is proving your business will survive. You will be happy. Everybody will be happy. This is what we call the tap. So I put the seek where seek help where possible there because you see um, you have to review the business and as you go along because say for instance the first year you start this and and I like it uh, um, because this is the beginning of the year 2022. It is an opportunity for you to do something extraordinary, and then. By the end of the year, we can come back to the same point and reflect to see, okay, we practice it and what happened? Okay, so along the line, you get somebody to help you to say, okay, maybe um, let's, uh, let's, let's increase the profit from 5% to 10. And let me increase my, my pay, uh, pay account to, um, um, uh, to 25. It's, you know, so the review will have to take place because it depends on what is certain. And sometimes you can also bring it down. Remember, small plates, small plates gives you better calories intake, better joy in eating the food than taking one big chunk. That will choke you. That's not good. And it will choke the business. Thank you. So this is our activities. So now we understand the principles. So when we make our sales, yeah, all receipts from sales go to income accounts in bank one. Yeah. So that is there. Everybody knows everything you sell goes into your account. So that account, you already have it. Okay. You already have it. So you don't need to set this one because this is where all your sales go, especially these days where people pay by card. And so most of your sales will go to a particular account. 
Then review your account balances at the end to see the cash flow trends. The cash flow trends to see, okay, how money is coming in and how it is being transferred to the, to, to the other, other um, account. So let's go to the next one. Right, so what you do is that every 10th um, and these two dates, you can vary them as you want. But for the sake of this principle and the philosophy behind it, this is the, 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 the date which the, 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 the founder or the, the person who propounded this theory used. And so I want to stick to it because it works. From, the, from you have two dates in a month, 10th and the 25th of every month, okay? So it says you will transfer all, in, all funds in the income account in bank one to other accounts at, um, at bank one based on your percentage allo allo um, uh, allocations. So what that means is that if you have got 10,000 um, pounds in your accounts on the 10th, what you're doing is that you are going to transfer first your 5% into your profit account, your 20% into your pay account, your 19 or 20% into your tax account. Okay? This is, you're putting all this into, into, into account one. Okay, so when you do that, what remains in the in account one for the, the, the income account, that becomes the one you the, the amount you use to run the business. You've taken away your profit, uh, you, some, some percentage for profit, some percentage for tax, some percentage for your pay. So uh, um, you make sure that you that is out. Okay, now you then transfer everything from account one. Okay, your account one, you're going to put them in account two. You see, the reason is that you are taking this money out of sight. Okay, but the reason why your profit, your profit pay and taxes account has account one, it becomes, it, it becomes a transit point. That transit point has, has, has two, fun, or one, uh, two functions. One is that it helps you to see a separation between your, the, the, the money you use to run the business, which will be there, maybe 55% will be in separate accounts, one in the income account. Um, and then number two is that it gives you the chance, at, it's, it's a place where if you want to take um, any money from the business in terms of pay, that is the place you take it before you transfer it to account two. So it's a transit point. So if it stays there and you, you don't have any need for it, then it goes straight to account number two, okay? So remember that we are giving you a template for which you will disperse all your, your pay, your, 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 not, the, not the employees pay, yourself, yeah? You as an owner, yeah? You disperse all your pills and, and all your other bills from the, um, and, and all your other bills from the operating expenses. So there's a separation. So your operating expenses account has nothing to do with your pay account. You have got something set up and your tax account has nothing to do with your operating account. So you see that this is a healthy way of running your business. You are confident. You put something there for the tax man. You put something there for yourself. You put something there for the business. What a better way to run a business. Okay, now this is a practical illustration. We have 10,000 pounds, yeah? We have 10,000 pounds as our, as, as our sales for the, for the first 10 days, yeah? So the, 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 the dates have been chosen because of what the principal uh, um, uh, encourages us to do. So 10th, 25th, then 25th, and the rest of it. And then the income section is where your sales are. This is your, your sales income 
or your revenue or how you get your money. And then the top is your allocated percentages. And then your, the amount. And then the owner's pay, then the balance. Okay, so this particular one is an illustration only for the owner's pay. Remember we said owners first, owners first. So let's focus on you because your survival is key. Your mental health is key. Now, so on the 10th, we have 10,000 pounds. You have decided to award yourself 10% pay. So on the 10th, you transfer 10% of the 10,000 into your, into, uh, of that amount into um, uh, your, uh, your account one. Yeah, account one. And you have said that, and maybe I need to make this clear. You have made it your habit of paying yourself 2,000 pounds, okay? So you pay, you take, the only time you pay yourself is when you have 2,000 pounds or more in your accounts, okay? So th this is it. So first, the, the, up to the 10th, you can't take any money because um, you have only 1,000 pounds. And then 25th, you make a sale of 15,000. You take 10,000, you put it in account one, the place where I put the amount, yeah? Maybe I have to put account one there, but the amount goes to account one. So now you have 1,000 plus 1,500, okay? So that gives you 2,500. So now you say, this is the end of the month. I am the owner. I am going to take 2,000. So 25th, you take 2,000 as your pay. Remember, the other remaining account, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, amount would have similar um, uh, tap going to, uh, similar deductions going to the various account, but this is only focusing on you, your account first. So on the 25th, by 25th, when that deduction was made, you have got 2,500. This is the 1,000 pounds plus 25th, 1,500, which gives you 2,500. You pay yourself 2,000, and then your balance is 5,000. 5,000 stays in the account one, immediately transfer into account two, out of sight. Remove it out of sight. Then you go to the next tenth, next month, tenth. Okay, your sales is eight thousand, and and I'm reasonable enough to vary the the sales because sales is not constant. Yeah, it's not constant. Sometimes it's high, sometimes it's low. So you have eight thousand pounds. Your ten ten percent is eight hundred. Your balance is five hundred, which remain from previously, plus the 8,003, it's not enough for you to pay yourself. So therefore, you say, okay, a rhythm, you see, this is maintaining a rhythm, maintaining a rhythm. And you can see 10%, it's not big, small plates. It's not impacting the business. And it's not making you superbly rich as, uh, either, but everybody is happy. 25th, 11,000 11, um, uh, uh, income, you pay 10% yourself, why not? So now you have 1,100, okay? Uh, um, plus, plus um, whatever was remaining, 1,900 plus 1,300, which, which gives you um, an amount for which uh, uh, 2,400, you take 2,000 and you're left to 400, you, you transfer it and so on and so forth. You see, so by this, you can see that you are paying yourself almost every month without impacting the business, small plates, taking sequentially, maintaining the rhythm, helps yourself and helps the business. This is the flow. This is the flow, okay? This is the flow. Okay, so here we have 
the full suite, yeah, the full suite of the transactions. So here we've got the profit account, owner's pay account, taxes, and expenses. Okay. So ten thousand pounds as an illustration. Ten percent go to yourself. Um, uh, your, that is the profit for the business. It goes there. Then you have the owners, 15%. So this time you say you're paying yourself 15%. That goes into account number one. Taxes, 25% goes to account number one. Expenses, 5,000 remain. So what this one means is that, you see, out of the 100% of the 10,000, you have taken 50% off and you have left 50% in the business. Work will expand to meet the resources available to it. The business will adapt, will adjust, will survive, will learn to cope with that money. Which also means that you as a businessman will become smart. You say, remember work, work expands. You see, and, and, and cost will expand to meet the money available to it. When you, have, when you have so much money there, then trust me, things come into your mind. Oh, I need a cleaner this. Oh, I need a, I need a, uh, a chaperone. Oh, I need that. Oh, I need, because the money is there. But as soon as your expenses amount is small, or it's not small, but restricted, then you begin to think, do I need this? Actually, no. Do I need this? No. Why am I even using here? Can I work from home? Yes, and there is benefit from working from home because uh, it has a lot of tax advantages. Why, why am I paying this? You see, so there will be so many ways. Can I do my business without actually being on the high street? Yes or no? So why am I in the high street paying so much money? Because I can afford it. This is what this is all about. Now the new formula, sales, take away profit, equal expenses. Does that ring a bell? The focus of your business now is on profit, not expenses. Remember we changed, the other one was sales, less expenses, equal profit. Now the, the, the Zoom lens is on, is on profit. You run the business for yourself. And so why is that expenses has become the focus of your business all about? Have you asked us a why? We need to disentangle ourselves from what is convention, what is generally accepted. Okay. Now there are questions which I'm sure you can answer. What do you make of this approach? What do you make of this approach? There's a poll going on, I'm sure. You, See if you can answer this. Do you see yourself practice, practicing this? Has today given you a new perspective of profit and your own pay as a reward for your entrepreneurship without which the business wouldn't survive? Now, the gap approach and the new approach that sales less expenses equal profit. Sales less profit equal expenses. Which of the two systems do you like best? Final word. Okay, final word. Okay, it's a lot of words here, but I just want you to take a second to look at it. You see, the philosophy of profit first places emphasis on you, the entrepreneur. You see, it forces you to reward yourself first against all conventions. This then brings an intentional resource constraint on the business. It brings an obstacle on the business, but manage well. This obstacle will then become the path, the opportunity for your business. We should also remember that within every obstacle and according to Holiday, it's an opportunity to improve our business conditions. And I said earlier on, constraints force us to challenge the status quo. 
It makes us to revisit the unconventional approach to doing things and improves uh, and, and brings improvement in order to, make, to overcome the challenge that has arisen. The profit first approach might have a positive effect on your business health and yourself as an entrepreneur in the long run. Remember the punchline, work expands to fill the time available for its completion. Any questions or further questions, you can contact me or John. But thank you very much for listening. I've really enjoyed your, your company. Thank you. So how would you apply these work principles to the current scary political situation? Um, and the example given here is uh, defending the Ukraine. That question's from Dick Wallace. The thought behind the question is how, how do you apply profit first in, in particularly um, scary situations where albeit, and let's take another example of um, COVID maybe when there's less um, assuredness about the money that will be coming in from sales. You know, how, how do you maintain this profit first um, point of view? Okay, so yeah, and, and I understand that because the COVID has, has had a devastating impact on all businesses, yeah, big and small. And so um, I think we can, you, can, you can agree that um, uh, the COVID situation is it's not something which we, we, we um, experience every, every year. And this has been something which is just uh, uh, trusted upon us. And so we can't make a rule out of this, but in, in, in this particular climate in which we find ourselves and depends on the nature of the business you have, it is still important to so look at yourself as an owner and not to get um, uh, um, uh, swallowed um, by events and therefore uh, and thereby not rewarding yourself in the business. You see, COVID or no COVID, you are in the business because you want to be in the business. So you need, you need to set something aside for yourself as a business person, however small it is. Remember the small play principle? So here I'm not advocating for, for you to take an, uh, any big money. See, if you, if, you, um, if you forget anything at all, look at the, remember the slide, uh, on which I have two plates, big plate and small plate. Okay, so the small plates, yeah, the top, your, your percentages can be small, but in the end, it will be bigger for you by the end of the year. When you were speaking about the task to set up mm -hmm. um, separate accounts, so uh, Darren's asking, are you actually speaking about physically, you know, setting up four accounts um, and if so, does this make it difficult for accountants? Okay, thank you very much for that question. Yes, um, what I meant, I know this is, is an administrative nightmare and I don't like to use the word nightmare, um, but it is something you must do. You see, the reason this is discipline. You see, without doing that, you would fall into the habit of doing the same thing all and all, all and over again. This profit first requires discipline. And part of that discipline is setting up the account and forcing yourself to comply with what you have set up. You understand? So if you don't do it, you just assume that oh, it will be done, it will be done. And, 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 and you, can, you, can, you, can, you can bet yourself at the end of the year, you are still doing the same thing. But try set new accounts. There are many banks which will accommodate that. And let the money go as we have stated. And by the end of the year, you would come here and say something different. So talking about additional costs potentially that um, maybe you wanted to factor in when going down the profit first route um, in terms of uh, administration costs and card costs of, um, which I guess is tied into what you just mentioned in terms of the administration of, of, of those, those new accounts. Um, and actually, something that you, you touched on as well from another question, the, the uncertainty costs um, for, you know, things like COVID and in, with Profit First, you know, how, how much should you be putting aside for, for uncertainty? Um, and should this be, be factored in as, as well? And if so, you know, is it, is it, should we be looking at percentages or 
yeah, how, how would you how would you approach that? Okay, that, that is an excellent question, and thank you very much for asking that because I know this probably will resonate with many uh, of our audience. Um, yes, you see, we are in extraordinary time, and so which requires extraordinary measures. And so, yes, uncertainty because I think okay, I said um, set four count, but you can go to the next go to the next uh, uh, mile and say okay, I'll make it five. I'll set an uncertainty uh, uh, account. So the uncertainty cost account would be things that you haven't planned for, which you think may happen or may not happen. So what you're doing is just remember small plates and I cannot, I cannot, you see, I get bounced when I, anytime I think of the small plates. It's so effective, something small. So if you think you don't know the uncertainty, but you think something may happen, or there's a risk something will happen, Say 2%, put 2% as uncertainty cost, or 1%, depending on the size of your business. Yeah, five, 1%, 2%, something like that, and put it away. And remember the, the Parkinson's law, expenses will expand to cover the resources available to it. If you take away the uncertainty cost, how much remains the business can cope? If you don't take the uncertainty cost, what remains the business will swallow? So the Parkinson's law is a behavioral law, which I think can be applied effectively in small and medium-sized businesses. Um, so I don't know if that, if that answers your question. I hope you did. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, it's brought to you uh, from the Innovation Center at the Knowledge Gateway the University of Essex as part of the University Enterprise Zone in conjunction with Oxford Innovation uh, who operate the Innovation Centre on our behalf. It remains for me to say thank you very much to Josh Clark for handling all the IT, to Neil Griffith for his presentation earlier, thank you Neil, and to Joshua Obey-Nayaka for the presentation from the Essex Business School on Profit First very illuminating. Uh, I must emphasize, I use it myself in real life and it does work, so we'll take it from me, that's an endorsement. And thank you to Essex County Council for funding today's webinar as well. So I now say goodbye and thank you very much. Indeed.